Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at some old files of mine. Now obviously I did mention recently that I will be starting a biomedical sciences degree later in the year, and one of my longer term goals is to, I'll put my face back on for a second, become excellent in biomedical visualization. So just general medical and science visualization, it doesn't have to just be, you know, biologically related. But I love like diagrams and like animated visualizations of really complex things, things that you wouldn't typically be able to see with your naked eye. And I'm not the only one because there's a lot of people in the medical science community, especially in the Blender community even, that love doing that as well. And the funny thing is, I've already kind of done this just on a whim, even before I was interested in doing a degree while doing tons of Blender experiments over the years, seemingly just for the fun of it and not for a professional reason, I've already given myself the tools to get started. And one of those was microbial demos. I put it up on Gumroad and I think I knew at the time one of the reasons why I did so many random things was because I was giving gifts to myself in the future in case I ever needed them. And it's the same with the recent work as well, like Afterglow and all of the material projects. I always made stuff for my future self in case it became relevant. And now it has, well, some of it anyway. So what I know is at some point, looks like it was 2022, the beginning, I made some uh, biomed viz stuff one of them was about microscopes and one of them was like imagine you were looking at viral particles now they were integrating some work i was doing with the biogen add-on which yes i know needs an update so they were geometry nodes based so this is the microbial one and the thing about this was if you selected the microbe painter object and again this is available in gumroad i think it's five dollars in case you wanted to try it out then you would go to weight paint and you can actually paint the presence of microbial things now this isn't based on any real microbe. These were all effectively just style experiments and early geometry nose tests. And in this case, it was like combining voxelization of like different layers of voxels within one object just to see how it would look for this purpose. And also obviously just kind of making use of depth of field to simulate like the focal plane of a microscope. And I look back at this now and I think, oh wow, this is going to be so handy for me. I'm glad I worked on it. But it does also remind me to work on Bygen, of course. But that wasn't the only one. There was one that I've called depth of field, but it's got a different name in the, the Gumroad file. Now this was the fun one. I think the online file has a slightly different look to it because this one I think has extra particles and volume stuff going on. But it was a kind of animated, you know, 3D viz of what a microscope like I suppose this would be extracellular environment might look like again from absolutely no understanding whatsoever so this is just what me back then would imagine like the space between cells might be like not because I needed it but just because I thought it would be fun but now it's obviously become hyper relevant again and I believe part of the fun of this was like doing triplanar scattering for image depth maps so I don't think they needed to be necessarily seamless again I've always been playing around with like non-seamless techniques it's fun looking forward now to hex scatter in this in the shader space but I had a scatter map node here for geometry nodes so we could take an image in this case it's called alien underscore free and use it to create variety on a 3d surface which is great for cells right because well, as far as I know and I will learn more membranes aren't perfectly smooth and they're surrounded by glycoproteins and other types of complex shapes which is more the domain of Brady's molecular nodes. Now obviously these are exaggerated for like stylistic effect but now I look at it I think you know what stylistically why would I start from scratch again if I wanted to lean slightly more into the realistic environment of visualization in the future when I can just kind of modify what I already have. So the purpose of this video is just to have a look at that because as a starting point I think it's really good for a style because when you have a look at like educational content for things like biology and all that because I've, I've been doing pre-learning courses and I'm doing one on virology and it's really funny because when you're looking at material made for the courses like 3D animations they're so like five frames a second and like no lighting but like just basic oh here's something that someone has very quickly sculpted together to represent a cell and there's like a circle moving towards it you know what I mean like it's so you can tell it's made by someone that learned blender I'm pretty sure it'll be blender just for the sole purpose of demonstrating that which is great and I actually find that still really useful it's really interesting seeing like the minimum viable product for conveying a piece of information. But if you could have something a bit more fancy, then why wouldn't you? I like the idea of having a 3D space like this that can be used for demonstration. Maybe I could overlay text, have the text constraint to always point at the camera. 
So we can reuse the same scene for getting image diagrams for things like textbooks, but also for animating for demonstrations. So we can start from like a macroscopic view of how like a virus and a cell might sit next to each other. And then we could zoom into like the protein level on the surface. And you can see here as we zoom in, we could get like a really pretty sense of depth going. And maybe we could have proteins sitting or binding to the edge there and adapting like the, uh, the depth point as we go. You know, obviously I'm nowhere even near close to the first person to doing literally exactly this, but I just wanted to see whether I already had a starting point for it. And I guess I do. I like minimizing the stylistic impact of it, you know, making it a bit more subtle. Then we'd have like a glycoprotein or, you know, like a Corona spike protein or anything like that growing out the edge of it. And then we could kind of macroscopically zoom out and have a look. If I wanted to take it further, I would need to re-familiarize myself with geometry nodes because it'd be nice to have like membrane interactions going on to make things a bit more dynamic. Because at the moment, like the displacement on the object is generalized, so it's entire. But it would be cool to have some dynamics where we can have cells interacting, almost like a collision type thing. Or blending and merging and separating, because that'd be good for like, you know, replication, cell division. So I'll think about it. But I just kind of thought it was funny that in doing random things, and it's also why I encourage you to do random things, I have just received a gift from the past from Random Kurt that is basically an overpowered starting point for doing these kinds of visualizations. Let me just remove the random string plane. One of my intentions for doing services like this, as I've kind of been describing, is to conceptually have multiple styles that maybe a client could choose from. So I would already have a starting point for working with them and providing what they want. Now I'm moving around this world origin. I'm thinking I should make it local to the camera so I can easily just slide it back and forth like a dolly. I'm actually going to save a copy of this. Now there have also been material changes over time as well, especially in relation to the principal BSDF. But first of all, let me just try and get this depth of field fixed. All right, that's good enough. I've got it kind of going on a dolly now. It's not perfect, but it'll do and then maybe for a slight bit of extra surface detail i'll just increase the uh not the seed the scale one more subdivision actually i'll turn the scale back down and under the material properties we've got like sheen now as well which i think might be handy sheen and coat coat for some specularity roughness control i just think it could really help to like highlight surface elements as we go especially if we did have something like a protein sticking out if i up the roughness how handy is the sheen for giving us like a kind of mem membranous fresnel something like that yeah it could be handy the aperture might need to be modified a bit just to kind of widen what we're actually allowed to see but you know, modifying the aperture is great for if we're doing like actual microscopy type visualizations, because obviously the focal plane is very limited when working with that. But then obviously, if I go around to doing some kind of protein generator, that might be where molecular nodes uh, comes into the picture, then, you know, we just be able to represent it, animate it, show some interactions, etc. I feel like that would be a good place to kind of experiment and then try building some new GeoNodes tools for that. Because let's face it, GeoNodes is going to be the most powerful and sensible thing to kind of use for building these types of animations. But yeah, I just thought it was funny how pre-experimenting with different fields, even without a specific interest of going into them, you know, in the past, just kind of opens the way for avenues to expand upon in the future that may or may not be relevant. So I just kind of encourage you to play around because you never know when you'll make something. Let's just sign that object that will basically save you in the future. But yeah, if you want to play with these microbial demo files, like I said, I had old versions available on the Gumroad. They may not look exactly the same, but they are there in case you want to give them a, a little play with. I bet you I could do a really good sperm entering an egg <laughs> with this. Oh, um, I did actually start thinking about like textbook type is I wonder sizes.blend. Okay. So this is obviously much more generalized, but I was thinking different styles for clients, a white paper style. So rather than just having full artistic, like we've um, already been looking at in this video, I was thinking about diagrammatic type things and you know how I could do that and have it so we could look at stuff from multiple angles, but also have the, the text update as well. So if someone says, Hey, I just want it rotated this way or that way, then that's fine. Or how would we auto generate like different types of bonds if you're showing atomic things? and whether I would have like a material style that would kind of be unique, something people could choose from, but also make it grayscale. So it's easy to print just on like non-colored paper, but I can also do that with the compositor. So if I just made like a hue saturation node and then turn that down, but obviously, I mean, it's better doing it with materials. So I've already been thinking about different ways to do that. So let's kind of darken that. 
and we'll do it for this one as well. So the idea would be that I would have a suite of styles that would include really in-depth artistry and things which are much more simplistic just for like generalized like textbook diagrams and like presentation type things. And then I'd work on more advanced graphing in the future as well. Actually, before we end it, I'll show you my uh, dyspnea file as well. So this is my personal file for health tracking and I've kind of advanced it a bit more. So what we're seeing at the top here, the thing that looks a bit like a genetic sequence is three hour chunks of the day well the, the top one is actually anything from like zero to, to 12 in the morning then it's like 12 to 15 15 to 18 18 21 21 24 24 to the end of the day whenever i go to bed and the different colors represent whether something is better or worse than average so you can kind of highlight and see where there are outlier moments where things suddenly go wrong so i spoke about this recently in my new type of visualization video where we were talking about using path trace lighting to kind of do data viz now there's no path trace active at at the moment in this but in regards to thinking about biomedical viz I am still coming up with new ways to represent data graphically. This is still technically in 2D space, but it's just easier making like 2D graphs in Blender, I'm finding anyway. So the intention of this is just to kind of help me identify patterns and just visually see where things go right or wrong. But anyway, that's just a little update. If you made it this far through the video, of course, put some kind of biological or science related emoji, anything medical as well. Remember, you can sign up to my Patreon if you want to help support my work and my studies, I suppose now. You can also sign up to the Patreon for free if you want to get updates. I'm not doing as many emails email updates recently, but I try and do less frequent compilation updates. So you'll get it. It'll look a little bit like a newsletter. Otherwise, check out my products on curtisall.online slash store. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.